Borthakur IS Academy, an endeavor of excellence. Borthakur IS Academy. Hello everyone. Welcome to Borthakur IAS Academy, Northeast's premier institute for UPSC and APSC preparation. I hope you all are safe and taking good care of yourselves. So today is the second session of Current Affairs 365. As I have already mentioned, this is going to be your one-stop solution for all the current affairs. We will segregate the news, okay? We will select those important news from all sorts of sources and then we will present it to you so that this particular video becomes your one-stop solution. Once you go through this video, you need not go to uh, search for any other different uh, materials, okay? Along with it, I would also like to add on one more point. Bothakus IAS Academy is now all set and geared up to help our friends and aspirants at Nagaland to prepare for NPSC. So all those who are preparing for NPSC, please come and join our sessions okay for current affairs this is going to help you further in your preparation and also you can go through our official website for further class details i know this is a difficult time for each one of us uh, the covid 19 second wave have, have hit us really bad and uh, you know everyone is struggling in their respective ways but at the same time let me tell you one thing let me assure you with one thing that this tough times they don't last forever okay we are going to move out from this we are going to come out stronger and this should not hamper your preparation this should not uh, you know be a setback in your preparation and that is the reason why we have tried to improvise our uh, current affairs sessions we are all geared up and i hope this motivates you enough so that you continue with your hard work so on this positive note let's get started so the first news of today has been sourced from the Assam Tribune in the front page itself. The news is regarding curfew in state from today. Time period has been extended. Earlier it was 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. And now the time is uh, the time slot has been shifted from 6 p.m. to 5 a.m. in the morning. And this uh, with this all the shops and offices will be closed by 2 p.m. This has been issued by the Assam State Disaster Management Authority as a part of measures to contain the second wave of COVID-19 pandemic. All the shops, commercial establishments and offices, they will have to be shut down by 2 p.m. on all days. And along with it, there are also certain restrictions on public gatherings, marriage functions and at religious places also. No meeting or gathering is allowed in open or closed spaces Okay, for marriages and uh, only the religious part of the ceremonies will be entertained, but there cannot be any reception of the parties okay before or after marriage and there also for the religious part of the celebration only a maximum of 20 people will be allowed at all religious places not more than five persons are allowed to gather at any time there will be restrictions on movement of people at public places from 6 p.m to 5 a.m all the restaurants thabas and eateries can entertain guests only up to 2 p.m okay and after uh, 2 p.m. only the takeaway including home delivery of food will be allowed uh, that too till 6 p.m. not not after that and delivery of essential goods and services they may continue with uh, if they properly observe the COVID appropriate beha behavior however uh, there is no uh, rules as such for organizations that renders essential and emergency services law enforcing services and election work the next news has been sourced from Ministry of External Affairs and it is regarding the virtual summit held on 4th of May between India and UK. Both the Prime Ministers, uh, Sri Narendra Modi and Boris Johnson, they participated in this virtual summit and uh, we all know that India and UK, they enjoy a long-standing friendship, right, based on their mutual uh, ideas of democracy, rule of law and also in the fields of uh, in the lines of growing strong complementaries and growing convergence between the two nations here in this particular meeting which was held on 4th of uh, may that is yesterday a roadmap 2030 was adopted that will further alleviate the bilateral ties between the two nations right and this has been seen as a comprehensive strategic partnership this particular initiative has been taken 
by both the nations to work on key areas for the next 10 years which includes the uh, people to people contact trade and economy defense security climate action and health so these are the key sectors where both the nations will contribute okay they will work they will try to help each other and uh, that's how they have designed this roadmap 2030 this this will be seen as a source that is going to further elevate the bilateral ties of the nations in this uh, meeting in this summit our prime minister he thanked prime minister johnson uh, okay boris johnson for the prompt medical assistance that was provided by uk in the walk of second uh, wave of covid-19 this uh, particular see we will have to analyze these points because uh, since we received this prompt medical assistance from uk there is a reason behind that because india last year was quite active in providing the supply of pharmaceuticals and vaccines to not just uk but also all the other countries when you help others you receive help in your tough times right india has been always very uh, friendly and providing its helping hands towards all the neighboring nations and also other nations right whenever uh, they see any whenever india sees any uh, other nation in trouble they try to they uh, try to help them right so this is the reason why now in our tough times we are getting a lot of support international support and uh, assistance from the other nations right here also the two prime ministers they launched a enhanced trade partnership which is going to boost the economies of both the nations so a wide range of topics and ideas were exchanged okay they were discussed which include the strengthening of defense and security ties uh, maritime counter-terrorism and cyberspace domains. The, the defense system, the defense sector was given priority here and also along with that they discussed certain multilateral forums like the Indo-Pacific and G7 cooperation in these multilateral forums. Uh, our Prime Minister Narendra Modi, he also received an invitation for the uh, G7 summit to visit UK during the G7 summit there. We will be discussing this topic in the later slides. Also, they have launched, both the nations have jointly launched a, a partnership on migration and mobility, which will provide greater opportunities for the students and professionals between the two countries. This will help in enhancing the innovative ideas. Okay, it will, uh, it will throw light upon the developmental activities which are going on in both the nations and they can join hands and work for betterment of the world uh, society as a whole. The third important news is regarding a model which has been suggested by the scientists of IIT of Kanpur and Hyderabad to predict the COVID-19 graph in India. With the increase in number of cases, okay, positive cases every day, it has become extremely important to keep a track on the number of infected persons okay on daily basis and because of that in order to help this study help this process the scientists of these two IITs they have come up with this model with sutra model which is the susceptible undetected tested positive and removed approach this particular approach has three different parameters okay this model has three different parameters based on which they will try to find out how many people are in fact infected on a daily basis how the uh, rate uh, of spreading this virus spreading of this virus it spreads okay it, it exhilarates in due course of time and finally they will also try to uh, find the ratio of detected and undetected cases as i have mentioned the three parameters it includes first one is called beta or the contact rate it will help in identifying the number of people who gets infected when they come in contact with a covid 19 positive person okay rate of spreading uh, of the virus okay second parameter is reach which will measure the exposure level of the population to this pandemic if a particular uh, person is infected then how quickly or at what rate the other people who are in contact who comes in contact with him or her they will be exposed to this uh, virus okay that will be checked and the third parameter is the ratio third one is known as epsilon which is the ratio of the detected to the undetected cases or undetected people the next news has been sourced from pib okay it is regarding 
the participation of Union Minister for Finance and Corporate uh, Affairs and also the Asian Development Bank's Governor for India, Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman. She has participated in the Governor's Seminar uh, as a part of the Asian Development Bank's Annual Meeting 2021. The seminar was titled as Cooperation for a Resilient Future. Altogether, 68 members uh, of the ADB, they have participated in the virtual seminar and some of the member nations included China, Philippines, Netherlands, Japan, etc. Uh, so now if we go for a quick recap of the Asian Development Bank, then it is a regional development bank which was established in the year 1966. It is headquartered at Philippines. Uh, Manila of Philippines and uh, this particular bank it mainly works for reducing poverty in uh, Pacific and Asia and Pacific regions through economic growth uh, pro working on uh, sustainable growth and regional integration. So these are the main objectives of the Asian Development Bank and in this seminar our finance minister she has appreciated the uh, frontline workers of india who has been continuously who have been working for uh, fighting this covid-19 pandemic okay and they uh, and she has also emphasized on uh, the initiatives that india have taken during this uh, period of emergency uh, like setting up of the sark covid-19 emergency fund then uh, providing access to covid tools accelerator and covax okay they have provided since india has uh, had this uh, vaccine diplomacy okay india was engaged in vaccine diplomacy so india has been able to help a lot of neighboring nations as well as other uh, underdeveloped or developing nations who cannot afford such uh, pharmaceuticals and medical facilities during this pandemic period so india has set an example by working together and also our uh, finance minister she is she has expressed her views that all the nations they should come up together okay they should join hands and work as a single unit to fight in this crucial period India has appreciated the efforts of Asian Development Bank for providing timely financial support during uh, the COVID period and also towards all the non-COVID projects, okay? Our finance minister, she has said that we should provide greater focus, okay? We should give, uh, we should focus more on the health resilience issues of Asia and Pacific and ADB should take this initiative uh, and come up with comprehensive solutions to address such problems. She has also assured that India has always been committed uh, towards any uh, sort of effort that needs to be taken for enhancing the regional as well as global cooperation. This particular summit, virtual summit, was all about how we can uh, cooperate for a resilient future and we can prioritize human development, right? In, in the areas in Asian and Pacific region, how we can prioritize human development and work together by joining hands, not just as one individual nation, but as, as a whole, right? We need to focus on that. This will not only uh, help in economic uh, growth of the individual nations, but will also provide sustainable development for uh, each of the nations. Next, we will have a look at the USA's COVID rescue plan. What USA is planning to, you know, move ahead to come up stronger from this COVID period. Okay, how it can help its citizens and what are the lessons that India as a country can take from this rescue plan and can inculcate in its own uh, development journey. Okay, which will boost the economy of India further. So this particular news will come under the GS paper 2 and 3. From GS Paper 2, the subtopic of uh, effect of policies and politics of developed and developing countries, this can fall under this category. And also for GS 3 in Indian economy and issues related to planning, mobilization of resources, growth, development and employment. Okay. Now let's have a look at what is this particular topic all about. So during the first joint address to US Congress, uh, Joe Biden he presented the new outline for U.S. development plan, a developmental plan for the nation. Okay, there are certain key features of this plan which we will see one by one, and we will try to analyze it and how we can. Or we will also see how India can learn from these uh, objectives. Okay, first one is creation of blue collar job. Blue collar jobs are those jobs that don't require any formal education or any college degree, like. 
certain jobs in the agricultural sector okay farmers they don't they did not have so, some you know formal college degree right and more nearly 90 percent of the infrastructure jobs which are created in america they do not require a college degree so here the aim is to provide blue collar jobs to almost all those individuals who are capable of doing it okay so that they can start earning and they can uh, come they can uh, like get some relief after the COVID-19 period okay this has been a very tough time people had they are economically drained okay so if they start such uh, blue collar jobs then they can get at least some support right so this is the first point second is strengthening workers right here Biden has laid stress on the uh, on uh, on the right of the workers to form unions okay this is going to boost the bargaining ability of the working class so uh, he has urged congress to pass the protect uh, the right to organize act under which the workers they can form union and they can raise their voice together in a group and so that it can get immediate action okay they, the, those um, those complaints or those questions gets immediate answer they gets addressed immediately so that is the second point thirdly gender parity and increasing the minimum pay it will uh, help in bridging the gap between the payment scale of the men and women okay of uh, us and also he has uh, decided that the, uh, the minimum wage of all the working people will be raised to 15 dollars this uh, will further help in pushing the people okay bringing the people out of the poverty line okay those individuals who work for 40 hours a day they should not live below the poverty line this was his main idea thirdly to provide good education to provide quality education to those individuals who are from the between the age groups of 12 to 16 and uh, it will also invest and provide grants okay to all the historical black colleges and universities of the tribals which requires more attention at this point of time and finally uh, addressing the child care poverty okay another important element of joe biden's plan was to put money directly into the pockets of those americans uh, who ha who have children in their family okay they will help it will help more than 65 million children and it will cut down the child care poverty by half so they will also address the child care poverty issue here and also affordable health care health care should not be a privilege in america it should be a right of every individual to uh, get access to good health care facilities this uh, is one of the key feature of joe biden's plan he has proposed this um, in his plan to bring down the health care premiums and price of certain important prescription drugs this is very important for uh, to to be addressed in india as well right because we have we have such a huge population and health care is the minimum uh, is a basic necessity right it is not a privilege you have the right to be healthy in your country you have the right to uh, get access to good health care facilities and also joe biden has laid stress on the old notion of trickle down economies that advocated tax cuts for wealthy people now he have announced that the wealthiest section wealthiest one percent of americans they will have to pay a fair share of their uh, total income okay this is going to help the government to provide better facilities to the uh, less privileged section of that society right this needs to be learned we can take a good lesson from this particular uh, factor because india has the third most number of billion billionaires in the world even then 75 million people of our, uh, like 75 million population are living below the poverty line they have been pushed below the poverty line in the last year because of covid 19 uh, pandemic the the job opportunities many people they, uh, they 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 had to give up on their jobs right and that is the reason why the middle class section of our society was the worst uh, affected this kind of inequality can be merged this kind of inequality can be bridged only when the wealthier section of the society it contributes for the betterment of the society right since we have so many billionaires in our country as well we can urge them to uh, provide better to, to pay their taxes in a you know in a in a better manner so that it can be used for the less privileged section of our country also
So the next news is regarding India being invited as a guest to the G7 meeting. United Kingdom has invited Indian Prime Minister to uh, attend the 47th G7 meeting which is scheduled to be held in June 2021. Apart from India, Australia and South Korea uh, are also invited to participate in the proceedings of the summit. Now the main objective of this, uh, this particular summit is that here the uh, leading democracies they unite to help the world build back better from the coronavirus and create a greener and more prosperous future. This year's objective is mainly to fight how to uh, cope up with the COVID-19 pandemic situation, right? It is an intergovernmental organization, G7 uh, group of seven, which was formed in 1975. And this block, it generally meets annually to discuss issues of common global interest, okay? And also uh, sector factors related to international security and energy policy. G7, it does not have a formal constitution or any fixed headquarters and the decisions which are taken by the leaders, these are non-binding. Earlier, Russia was also a member of uh, the this particular block and it was known as G8. Russia was uh, added in the year 1997, but it was expelled as a member in 2014 uh, as after the annexation of Crimea region of Ukraine after it, uh, invo it involved in the annexation of Crimea region of Ukraine. So now the participating nations or the member nations are uh, the industrialized democracies of France, Germany, Italy, United Kingdom, Japan, and the uh, United States and Canada. Earlier also, uh, India has participated in the G7 summit. Okay, it uh, participated in the 45th summit, which was held in August 2019 in France and was also invited uh, for the 2020 summit in US, but it could not take place because of the pandemic. So this was all for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and share and also don't forget to be a part of our family by subscribing to our YouTube channel and also following us on all the social media platforms. Go through, don't forget to go through our official website for all the exciting uh, courses which are available now on online mode and also to avail a discount on each of the courses. Okay, I'll see you all again tomorrow with another session of Current Affairs 365. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. Bhathakur IS Academy Prostuti Aru Adhanor Nirbhar Jugyothi Kona Bhathakur IS Academy